most vital natural resource that's almost free because we're all good at creating kids, right? Is curiosity. You're born curious. But they've done a study in the US, in America, where they found that 98% uh, of children between the age of two and four ask a lot of questions. They all ask questions. 98% of children. By the time they go to middle school, middle school is like, uh, what is it, grade five or something? Five to eight or whatever. That number from 98 has fallen to 58%. 58%. It used to be 98, it's now 58. And when they leave school, it's come down to 25%. So you start, 98% of children ask questions. By the time they leave school, it's 25%. And that's in America. So you start as a question mark and you end up as a full stop, right? Now you can say, well, what's wrong with that? In India, I've visited hundreds of schools all over the country, all over the country. Mostly uh, government schools, for the most part, but a few private schools. And uh, I don't think even 25% of the children are given an opportunity to ask questions, or they don't ask questions. It's probably less than 5%, 1 in 50 or something, 2%, 3%. So it's very, very, very low. So the question is, is that bad? Well, it's bad in the sense the human nature, the human impulse, we all want to express ourselves. Am I right? I mean, you kids there, probably you want to express yourself, you want to speak, you want to sing, or you want to dance, or you want to play a sport, or you want to explain something to someone. It's a very basic human need. You may want to express it to yourself. You may not do it to somebody else, but you may do it to yourself. There are very great artists who don't paint for other people. They just paint because that's natural. It's like how a flower blooms. There may be no reason that we know of, but it just blooms. So the need to express yourself is very fundamental, very basic. So curiosity and questioning helps you do that. Because without that, you won't be able to express yourself. So it's an extremely vital natural resource. And without that, no individual, no family, no community, no country, society can really progress. You know, India, we talk about the old golden age of India. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Golden age of India. Yeah. Gupta period. North India. There was also the golden age of South India, but I'm talking about North India. Gupta period. And they've looked at how come it became the golden age. What was so special in that period? And I'm actually funding a project to understand that better. But I read somewhere there were three reasons for it. Aryabhata. Have you heard of Aryabhata? Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, he was a product of that golden age. A lot of sculpture, painting, you name it. So they give three reasons. One is money. You know, money makes the world go round, they say, right? Well, I haven't got too much money, but there are people here who do. <laughs> but it does make the world go round up to a point. So one is money. They had all these uh, clusters, they call them gills, uh, that were like today's factories. And they produced a lot of output, and there was money to invest. Okay? So that was important, the economics. The second thing, and very important, is that the leaders, the kings of the Gupta period, encouraged creativity. See, in any system, if the person at the top, or the people at the top, they give a signal about what they like or don't like. And those days, if you're a king, you know, you're the dictator. 
So the signal you give is very important. They really signaled that art and expression is very important. The third thing of the Gupta period, perhaps the most important thing, was curiosity. There was a lot of curiosity. There was a flowering of curiosity. Okay? So, curiosity is very fundamental. Curiosity is something you don't have to be rich to have. If you think, I don't have money, how can I be curious? The good news is, you don't need money to be curious. But if you're very curious, you may end up making money, if that's what you want to do, right? You may end up doing something else, and that gives you happiness, satisfaction. So, all of us have that in us, at every age. It's not that as a child you're curious, and then as an adult you become uncurious. Now that may be what happens in a lot of places, but that doesn't have to happen. That graph from 98% to 25% uh, does not have to go down that rapidly. Yeah? So Augustia's mission really is not to look for answers to questions, but really to look for questions to answers. It's the reverse. Hmm? The whole system is based on, do you know the answer to this question? Ah, she knows the answer to the question, how smart she is. Or he can tell you what 2 plus 2 is, how smart is that? Right? But really, creativity and progress happens not because you know an answer, but because you know how to question. But we never test people on how good they are at questioning, do we? But that may be the most important test. I'll give you a test. Just write questions, maybe on some subject or anything. And I'll give you grades because we are so obsessed with marks and grades based on how well you question. I don't think anyone's doing it. Maybe we should. Maybe we should try it out in Augustia. So that is really Augustia's mission. How do you bring about a shift from yes to why? from looking to observing with all your senses, from being very passive to learning to explore, from being very textbook bound or today internet bound. You know that Apple, they're talking about addiction to these iPhones, addiction to the internet, addiction to technology, and forgetting what's happening in real life around you, right? So for, from being very textbook bound to hands on, and finally, the most important shift from fear to confidence. Now, I remember this girl, Maunika. Today we have a couple of students from Kupak. Uh, Shravani. Shravani, there she is. She's a future leader. Varaprasad, who's, who's become a bad cat chartered accountant. Please sit up. Uh, I'm going to, they're going to speak about their experience later on. They've all gone through massive change. They've been ignited, right? But there was this girl, Maunika. <coughs> Maunika, I, I, have I got the pronunciation right? Would they? Yeah, uh, Monica. Okay. If I say Monica, you'll think I'm speaking <laughs> about my wife. So. so Maunika, she was a hopeless student. She didn't know how to answer questions. Maybe she was very curious, but she didn't know how to answer questions. So, uh, one day, she was uh, invited to our campus in Kuppam, and she came reluctantly. And when she was on the campus, uh, as luck would have it, the teacher called her and said, Monica, Monica, show me your finger, which she did. And he pricked it, and she went, ah, there was a drop of blood. And then he told her her blood group. Do you know your blood group? Yeah, I've forgotten mine, but anyway. He told her her blood group. Right? Now, as Maunika says it, she was shocked. She had no idea of a blood group. That it was her blood, so it was very personal. And all of a sudden, she realized that life is really interesting. There's so much knowledge. And I wasn't aware of all these things. 
Okay? And suddenly, she became very interested in study. And uh, her marks started to go up. Now, her father had told her that since she was a lousy student, that he was going to get her married off very soon. And she didn't want to get married young. Maybe she did want to get married eventually, but not so young. So uh, she was very afraid of getting married, uh, you know, as a teenager. But as her marks started to go up, she went to her father and said, look, I'm doing well in school. I'd like to go to college. Uh, will you allow me to go to college? And he said, no. So then she managed to persuade him that if she came first in school, would he allow her to go to college? Which meant that her marriage would get postponed. And lo and behold, she came first to school. Right? And it's not that the Agastya person was teaching her or tutoring her. It's just her inner motivation had changed. She began to take interest in things and she started doing well. She came first in school. She ended up in this SV University. Uh, Sri Venkateshwara University. I don't know if you've heard of it or been there. I used to play cricket matches against them as a kid. They bowl very well. You know, I keep getting out for a duck. But anyway, she became a leader of some 3,000 students in the university. And then she came. And she came and spoke to us, to all our staff, about how her life had changed because of that one pinprick. Right? So these pinprick moments are very, very, very important. If there's a chance for you to experience it, please do. Go and ask, give me a pinprick moment. <laughs> and the Agastya person's job is to find that moment that might change your life for the better. These pinprick moments can transform an individual and, in Gandhi's case, the world. Just one thing. So education is not just about, I've spent 15 years in school, I've spent 10 years in college, what a great person I am. I can answer all the questions, but I don't know how to ask you a question. You know, Vidya's colleague uh, from uh, Edelweiss, Venkat, I had tea with him the other day, and he was telling me about his life, and he said he studied engineering in Belgaum, in Karnataka. And he said, Ramji, the only thing I got out of my engineering was I found my future wife. <laughs> right? Yeah, I almost dropped the cup of tea in my hand because I was laughing so loudly. So that tells you about education sometimes, and often that's what's happening in a lot of schools and colleges all over India. I remember when we did this first brainstorming about what should Agastya do and what should it be? And we had some very smart people in the room. There was a girl in college called Puna in Bangalore. And she said, I can't remember a single thing I learned in school. <coughs> Same thing Venkat told me, right? And Venkat's a very successful guy. Maybe that's why he's successful. Okay? I can't remember a single thing I learned in school. There's only one thing I can remember. And that is a model of an African village that I made. You know that uh, our instructor Shivanand has made a model of the Agastya ecosystem, which is quite nice. So she had made a model of an African village. And she said, that's the only thing I can remember. Because she was involved in it. She wanted to do it. It was hands-on. It was experiential. There was some emotion. So what we are trying to do today in the, in the next three days is to create those moments for as many children and teachers and adults as possible. Because I truly believe it's that that can transform a country. Not highfalutin po you know, policies and so on. Those are important. But at the end of the day, it is this which can transform a country. And you never know what impact you have. I was talking to the a very dynamic principal from the school in Dharavi. I'm meeting her after a couple of years. Please, sir. And uh, I said, uh, how is it going? And she said, uh, you know, why aren't you coming back to our school, Agastya, and running those science fairs? 
And I thought, okay, you know, maybe it's just good fun or something. But she said, apparently after we ran that science fair some 10 years ago, her school students have started uh, going to medical college, uh, learning science, and it's a big transformation. Just through that sort of exposure. So you never know what it leads to. Now, none of this can happen without support. Right? As I said, money makes the world go round. At least today. Maybe in the old days it was whatever. But today, that's very important. And so uh, we have, <coughs> Agastya has prospered because people have come together to support our initiatives. Companies like today, there are representatives from Deutsche Bank, CIPLA, <coughs> my friend Jalaj Dani from the uh, Kapadwanj Kelavani Mandal, right? So it's people like that. Devil Sanvi, who's doing a great job in uh, social entrepreneurship and has a great perspective on what's happening across the country. So it's people like that who, whose support is vital in making any of these ideas happen. So we're very grateful that they made the time to come here today. They're going to be on a panel and uh, hopefully that should be really interesting. Please ask questions and in the spirit of the shift from yes to why and let's engage and have a great time. Thanks a lot.